You, 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 reckon, you reckon you could do this job? I can do any job. You could do any job? Any job. So why, why weren't you on a pitch today? You know what? I'll save that to the gaffer. You'll answer that. Right, okay, so you, you reckon you can... No, I'm suspended. I'm suspended. Okay, so you reckon you could take this camera down and do it? You reckon you could do an interview now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we put it to the test, shall we? Yeah. Let's do it. Honestly, I can't wait to hear my commentary back because I was literally just like, if he scores, I do not know what I'm going to do. Like, <laughs> So a precursor to the cup game and we're off and underway. Carl Shorten all in red, playing against Dorkin who are playing in luminous green tonight. Powerful choice. First touch for Patrick Oman. A couple of ex ribbons involved in the Dorkin squad today. Number six, Niall McManus was on loan here from Millwall a few seasons ago and many fans might remember Reese Hall who was here for a spell as well a few years ago and just signed a couple of weeks ago from Merson. First free kick of the game goes towards Carl Shorten. Chris Bolter penalised for a push on the back of the Santos. Shakes off the attentions of his marker, tries to get it out wide for Price. Strong challenge. Here's Phil Pop, just gives it short. McManus tearing forward. This comes off Moraf Gibbs. Price has got to deal with it. Gets it away to Santos, surrounded by green shirts. And Sullivan knocks it into the feet of Sol. McManus, Pryor, neat little flick. McShane bursts through, he's all the way through! And he's missed! Great save by Oman, in fact. Referee signals for a corner. McShane bursts completely through, one on one. Oman done well to stay on his feet and he got something on the ball. First real chance of the game goes to the visitors. Phil Pot drives it down the line. It's only half cleared by Dudley. The ball goes out wide to Beard, who gets a shot off on target. Good save by Oman. The rebound put wide. So he was under pressure by Danny Dudley, I think. Yeah, it was. Couldn't steer it back on target. Good shot by Beard. Forced the keeper into a fine save. And Patrick Oman again keeps the Robins in this game. Azari got away with one there. Adonai, great pick to pick out. Mendy cuts inside Bolter. Now he's driving towards goal. Bradford's made the burst through. Just too much on the pass. Better from Carl Shorten though, a bit more inventive. can come away on the far side. O'Sullivan puts it into the mix. Pryor's there. Oh, you'd have to say that's a good chance for a man of his calibre. 16 goals this season. He got that one all wrong. Ball goes up towards Pryor. Headed away by Dudley. And an eye. Now can Carl Shorten make something count on this one? Mendy again. And an eye. Here's Bradford. He's got... Corboa out wide, finds him now, faced up by Phil Pot. Corboa, can he, the little magic man, conjure something up here for Carl Shorten? Gets it onto his right foot and has a poke. Well, De Santos was coming in at the back post. Don't know how close he was to making a connection. But you can rack that, as an up, rack that up as an opportunity to Carl Shorten. They haven't had many in this half so far, 22 minutes gone. Carl Shorten nil, Dorking nil. Neat one-touch football by Carl Shorten, if they can make something count here. Mendy gets it back. Cuts inside onto his right foot. Here's Paul Boa. Spins away from Beard. Bradford. Mendy, Bradford again. Good spell of pressure this from Carl Shorten. Must be about 20 passes. Paul Boa spins, opens up for him a little bit. Left foot. Forces Huck into his first save of the evening. Better from Carl Shorten though. That must have been 25, 26 passes strung together. McManus has trotted over to take it. 
He was on loan here at Car Shorter, and it must have been about four or five years ago now. He was at Millwall at the time. Long throw, he goes in, flicked on. Taylor tries to knock it back into the mixer. It's acrobatic from Sol. Good opp opportunistic strike there by the number 10. Another free kick conceded by Carl Shorten. Pryor's stayed down. Isaiah pleads his innocence. It's still Carl Shorten Athletic nil, Dorping Wanderers nil. Opportunity for the visitors to get the ball inside the Carl Shorten area, however. Holy oh, tease. Come on, throw it in. Go short. Pryor. Back to O'Sullivan, gets it onto his left foot, dinks it in. Free header for Bolter, he's put it over. Too many men in green around in Bradford, and now they look to bring it away. McShane, well in by Michael Zaya, and that's the end of the half. Carl Shorten Athletic nil, Dorking Wanderers nil. Adonai just manages to nick it forward. Bradford, here's Isaiah. Can he keep it in Tom Bradford? He can't. Oh, that was a bit late there. Lewis Taylor just trots away. Bradford was just cattled into the fence in front of some Carl Shorten fans there. Michael Isaiah has taken exception to it. It was rather needless by Taylor. The ball was going out, everyone could see it. Referee's going to consult with his linesman. Robin's players are incensed. It did seem rather needless. I must say, the ball was already going out. It's clear as day. It's just three minutes inside the second half here. Peter Adonai and Lewis Taylor being pulled apart here. The Carl Shorten player managers incensed. And let's see what the referee's going to do here. What colours the cards? Taylor remains on the pitch. He's going to be a marked man. Taylor saying it's not his fault that Bradford wasn't strong enough to take the shoulder to shoulder, but the ball was already off the pitch. And if it wasn't, it was only millimetres. It's a pretty weak defence by the Dorking man. Just a booking. Chip forward by McManus. Plus short and clear their lines. Here's Corboa. Bit of space for him to open his legs up. Here's Mendy. Hasn't got a lot of support, has to do it on his own. Corboa just can't get it back into the path of Mendy. Dorking clear their lines. Corboa gets onto that throw in, it wasn't a, a particularly great one. Now he cuts inside, gets a lucky break, picks out Mendy. Oh, just took a nick off of, I think it was uh, McManus. Someone's still fiddling with the subs board on the Dorking bench. Maybe they just like the colours. Dorking have gone from playing some fine football in the first half to using some strong arm tactics since the start of the second, but they're top of the league, so they know what they're doing. The Santos can get his foot on it, he does. Can he pick out a red shirt? Finds Bradford, he's surrounded by men in green, but he picks out the Santos again. 
gives it square. Here's Adonai. Knocks it forward for Corboa. Just a little bit too much on it. On, and the guy sat back down again. Sorry, I'm obsessed with this, but he's been threatening to make a substitution for the past 10 minutes, the guy. Either that or they're having an impromptu disco, invite only. Corboa can't get his foot on the ball. Phil Pot. Now Mendy and Corboa can put some pressure on the back line. Here's Mendy. Gets a shot off. Good save by Huck. In comes Bobby Price. Oh, just knocked away by Beard. Good opportunity for the Robins. The pace of Corboa and Mendy troubling the back line of Dorkin. Mendy got a good shot off. Oh. Isaiah inadvertently found Price there. Kieran Lavery is the other player to come on for Dorkin, the ex South Park striker. That's neat football by Carl Shorten getting it out wide to Bobby Price. Got some options to uh, aim for. Goes in towards the keeper. He's dropped it, Mendy's there. Good challenge by Al Had. The decision's gone against the Robins. Didn't look like there was an awful lot in it. The keeper came, got the ball, and he just fell. There was green shirts around him as well as red. Elab went in strong on Mendy, who stayed down. Oh, what a game we've got here going on at Colston Avenue. No goals, but both goalkeepers have been forced into fine saves. We'll make that two apiece now. Neither side shirking the physical side of the game. Carl Shorten standing up and being counted against the physicality of the visitors. But there's been some good football on display by both sides too. And with 65 minutes on the clock, this match is poised to go either way still. And it goes from Bradford. Defended away for a corner kick. Chance for Carl Shorten to put some pressure on now. Dudley was there, punched away by Huck. Price has got it. As a strike. Meet and drink for the goalkeeper. Well, in by Ricky Corboa and got a round of applause from the Carl Shorten fans. Hamilton Downs knocks one into the channel for Dixon to chase. And he didn't get the right side of El Hab, who showed some good defensive prowess there. Here's McManus driving forward. Paul. Dawkins being forced back. Huck gives it out wide. If this is a precursor for the FA Trophy tie coming up middle of December, then we're going to be in for a real treat. Oh, Moraf Gibbs just got a toe end onto that. Soul thought he'd put his man through. The league leaders are here tonight. And while Carl Shorten would respect them, it's not to go easy on them. Moraf Gibbs with a big header. Drops the beard. Adonai just cushions it into the path of Bradford who gets it out wide looking for Corboa. Oh, now Phil puts Miss Josh that. Corboa's in here. He's right in front of his man. He's gone down. The free gives a penalty kick. Phil Pot couldn't catch up with him. It's going to be a booking as well for the fullback. And we've got a penalty kick here at Colston Avenue. 74 minutes on the clock. Who's going to take it? There's no Jordan Cheadle, no Omar Karoma. Mike Dixon standing there. Ricky Corbeau has got the ball in his hands. Tommy Bradford is certainly an option. Even Hamilton Downs has got a perfect record from the spot for, for the Robins. And here's going to be Ricky Corboa. Soul's just standing in the way, a bit of gamesmanship. Yeah. 
It is going to be Ricky Corboa. He's got four goals this season already. And this could be a pivotal moment in the game. Corboa against Huck. Corboa, he saved it! The goalkeeper gets right and got down low. Bobby Price has given away a free kick. All the Dorkin players are flapping about it. Well, I am a little surprised that maybe Tommy Bradford didn't take that penalty. He's experienced. He scored a great one in the shootout against Leatherhead in the Surrey Cup a couple of weeks ago. Fair play to Corboa for having the confidence to take it, however. In fact, this is their sixth home game on the spin as well. With a seventh to come on Saturday, Enfield Town come a visiting. But for now, Dorkin put the ball into the car shorten area. Headed away by Dudley. He goes out to try and block off Hall, who still manages to swing across him towards the back post. Adonai's got to deal with it. Good save by Oman to Adonai Pryor. It's still live. Great block on the line by Morath Gibbs. Fantastic stuff to Adonai. I think it was Kieran Lavery. Oman initially done well to Adonai Pryor at the near post. Another corner for Dawkins, and it goes towards the back post. Taylor's all alone. Great save by Oman. No one had picked up the number five. Carl Shorten trying to clear their lines desperately. Lavery can't tee anyone up. And it goes to the Carl Shorten area again, away by Price this time. Corboa looks to try and relieve the pressure. Strides forward. Being caught late there. Much to the consternation of the car, short and bench. Couldn't quite see who it was. It. They get themselves away from the area where the foul took place. It was McManus. Again, the car, short and players are incensed. They just think Dawkins are getting away with one too many. Man of the match tonight goes to Carl goalkeeper number one, Patrick Omar. Patrick Oman has received the Man of the Match award from the home fans. I don't like it when it gets announced with still five minutes plus added time to go. I always think it should come after the final whistle because you can tempt fate, but well deserved. He's made four or five great saves tonight. Still haven't seen if the referee's actually Books McManus or have a, had a word with him for the challenge. Yeah. Well, the style of Dawkins played his second half hasn't won them too many admirers from the home fans' point of view. But if you're vying to win this league, if you're not going to score, then you damn well make sure you don't concede. So like Carl Shorten will have to make a change. Well, Bo is going to have to go off. It's Billy Bishop who's come on, the goalkeeper. Well, I knew we didn't have that many fit options on the bench, but I mean, there's only there's less than five minutes to go, and Billy Bishop has gone up front. This is amazing scenes. Here we go. Peter Adonai knocks one into the channel, looking for Dixon. And he's all over him. Free kick to Carl Shorten. Is it a penalty? The linesman seems to be signalling for something. It's definitely a free kick. Beard's the man who's been penalised. Billy Bishop is wearing number six. It is all going on here. And it, got, it went in low. A bit wasteful from uh, Mendy, to be honest. Isaiah, can you stick it back in the mixer? He does. Hamilton Downs is there. Gets his head on it. Bishop's in there! Hamilton Downs! Corner! Yep, yeah, corner to Carl Shorten. 
The big men are going to stay up. Bishop's taking a little knock. Just holding his leg. Price is going into the box. Adonai is on the edge. Dudley standing almost on the goal line. And it goes from Bradford. Hamilton downs again. Hucks there. What a save. Bishop turns it back in and it's been hooked away. Hall battling for possession. And now here's McManus. He's taking on Morif Gibbs. The defender's got to get there first. And he does well to shepherd the ball out of play. This is unbelievable. Carl Shorten ending the game with a goalkeeper up front. We've had a missed penalty. We've had several superb saves by both goalkeepers. It's still goalless, unbelievably. There's been potential for sendings off. We've had a disco in the Dorking subs bench. Four minutes. The board has gone up. Price with the long throw. And that's it. The referee signals for the end of the game. Carl Shorten Athletic nil, Dorking Wanderers nil. Well, for a nil-nil, that's the most entertaining game I've watched in a long, long time. Both sides created chances. We had a penalty that was saved. We had a goalkeeper that ended up playing up top. We've had several clashes that could have resulted in uh, sending off or two at any point. But Carl Shorten play out their first nil-nil against the current league leaders. Both sides might be satisfied with a point. But Dorkin had the better of the first half. Patrick O'Man forced into great saves by James McShane early on. And Samuel Beard as well on the quarter hour. Carl Shorten, Ricky Corbara in the first half had a good effort saved by Savamir Huck. But the game really sprung to life in terms of a contest after the break. Lewis Taylor could have been sent off for a barge on Tommy Bradford that left the Carl Shorten player in a mangled heap by the fence. And that really was the catalyst for Carl Shorten sparking into life. Jacob Mendy forced a good save out of Huck. Patrick O'Man was at it again late on. A deep cross from Hall. Pryor. Pryor at the back stick with a big header, but it was a good save by the Dorking goalkeeper. And then Carl Shorten ended the game with their substitute goalkeeper coming on and playing up top. He was close to a couple of high balls, but the script wasn't written for him to pop up with a winner. Both sides will settle for a point. I've been James Barrett-Sterling. Carl Shorten are back here again on Saturday against Enfield Town. But you can uh, catch all the highlights and post-match reaction on Robins TV. Robins Fans TV, I'm James Barrett-Sterling in the clubhouse after the 0-0 draw against Dorking Wanderers. But what a 0-0 draw it was. It was full of excitement and incident. I've been joined by some Norwegian Robins. Welcome, gentlemen. This is yeah. Helga, Kron and Fred. Um, and they've come over to watch the game today. Um, can I just um, start with you, Helga? What, why are you here today, though? We don't get many Norwegians here. <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, we are a group that uh, go to England several times a year for watch football. Today, uh, no, um, you know, no Premier League match in the vicinity, in the London area. Okay. So we are looking for well, uh, seventh, uh, you know, um, seventh tier. Yeah, seventh tier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, quite good game, I would have to say. Intensity, passion, uh, but you know, you don't have the the, uh, the quality of the players like you have in Premier League and uh, so forth, sure. but uh, you have still the, the, the passion. Yeah. 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 I've been joined by Keith, the assistant manager. Keith, uh, what's your first thought on that? A point earned or maybe two drops? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over the edge and say two dropped. Uh, obviously because we've had the most clear-cut chance in the penalty. Um, and rightly created and, and possibly should have had another one near the end. I think from most angles, most people that have seen it said that Dixon was inside oh, right, yeah. when he was brought down as well. I didn't think so, but 90% of the lads think it was. Right. So right, right. You've got to say that was another opportunity and, and it could have been the three. Uh, going into this one, we've got some injuries, had some suspensions as well, and also illness has is, is been running through the squad a little bit. So it was a bit of a, a, not a patched up team tonight, but we were struggling a little bit, weren't we, for, for bodies? 
Yeah, when you think it was a fairly tough game Saturday and then to come out tonight without those bodies uh, and every player out there had to reproduce again after Saturday, you've got to say massive credit to this group of players. It's, it's an irony that we've put players out on loan, and, but you don't expect to get the injuries and the problems that we've had in such a short space of time. It's incredible that you know, Ola after Saturday, Omar, Raheem, you know, uh, and obviously Big Michael uh, with his illness and, and, and the suspensions on top of that. Uh, yeah, again, dealing with adversity is a, a major part of what we're doing right now, but they're doing it well. And, and I think I certainly am, and I know Peter is, we're, we're proud of them at the moment. Still inside the Robins Nest after the goalless draw against Dorking Wanderers. I've been joined by Christian and Alan, old hands at Robins TV, but more than welcome as always. Uh, Christian, I'll come to you first. How are you feeling after that one? Uh, I said to Keith, is it a point earned or two drops? Uh, well, we had a penalty. Um, it's frustrating. It feels like a point dropped, to be honest, because I think towards the end we had more opportunities. I think they started the game well. It was fairly even, really, but I think towards the end we were on the ascendancy and they, you know, they were resorting to long balls and last-ditch tackles in order to like, stop our play. And yeah, it feels like two points dropped to me. I feel that that one was there for the taking. Wow, against the league leaders as well. Alan, game of two halves, some called it. Dorking yeah. bossed it in the first 45 minutes and then we came back into it after the break. Right, Jim, yes, that's right. And uh, they, they seemed to, it was really sad in a way. I, I don't usually come away from games feeling sad, but they adopted a certain style of play which uh, didn't impress me at all. Um, we've got, we could have had a very bad back injury down this side. One of our players was clattered into the barrier and um, a suspected broken collarbone I'm just you know just sad really that the Dorking I thought would be better than they are they couldn't be us they are top of the league not impressed it's sad really I thought our boys battled so hard and so well um, and deserved the draw if not the win they didn't have an answer to us and I think um, their sort of follow-up uh, last ditch approach was uh, evident that they couldn't handle us so sorry about that I feel a bit a bit low because um, I'm you know when players get injured in games I'm you know sad by it no that's, that's, it. that's fair enough it was definitely something that happened you football or are you enjoying the, no, the men's finish, side as well finished finish you football now a long time ago I went into women's super league as well did some stuff with ESPN, and uh, now I'm here, sort of full, doing full-time matches with Cole Shorten. Is it true that you got fired from the women's side of the game because you took the camera into places you shouldn't? No, no, no. I wish I had, but no, 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 no. That's not the case. Uh, the BT Sports came in and threw us all out. Oh yeah. Yeah, they bought the license, and uh, that was it. All of us independents were either st go with them or get kicked out. Money talks, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did you make of the game from behind the lens today? Car short and nil, Dorking nil, but it's quite entertaining. Yeah, I'm always talking to myself behind the camera, a bit grumpy sometimes when things don't go Carl Shorten's way. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, it was a really good show today. Carl Shorten did really, really well. I think uh, Dorking obviously came out with... That's all right. He's got a good eye, this cameraman. Yeah, He's got a good eye. Yeah, I'll see. What's he... oh, okay, no. okay. Well, I'll tell her later. Thank you. Thank you, director. Spielberg. And action. A goalless draw with Dorking Wanderers tonight. We're still here in the Robins Nest. I've been joined by the man in the match from our point of view, Patrick Homan. Uh, Patrick, just talk us through that one tonight. It seemed like it was a really, really intense physical game out there. Yeah, I mean, there's two teams in, in forms. I mean, obviously Dorking doing very well in the league and we're, we're trying to push to, to be up there. And I think we do have the, the quality to, to be up there. So, no, a very tight game with, with loads of chances to, to both ways. Yeah, and speaking of loads of chances, this man... Uh, it's two in the first half that I particularly remember, the one where the guy burst through. Can you talk us through that one? Because I thought initially it was going to creep in inside the near post. Yeah, I mean, he sort of came through there one on one with me and um, I managed to, to step out and make myself, try and make myself as big as possible. And um, I think it was my elbow, I got, got my elbow on it and um, I mean, the ball went outside and it was a bit of a relief. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's just, just happy with the save. And how, how often do you come over and watch a game in or around London? Uh, uh, for me, myself, uh, I have two or three trips a year, but uh, you're talking about these guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> more like five, six. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kron, so what did you make of the, the game between Dorkin and Carl Shorten today? Oh, I think it was a quite entertaining game. 
the away team uh, was uh, best in uh, the first half and uh, Kasi Alten were best in the second half and maybe should have uh, won the game after the, the penalty. Yeah. But uh, I think it's uh, a fair result. It's a, it's a draw after all if you consider the first and the second half. Yeah, yeah. Fred, what, what did you make of the uh, the penalty in the second half? Because the guy didn't look like he struck it very well, for, you said to me off camera. Yes, I'm a, he is a judge and a, a, a referee in Norway. I agree with him. I, I think it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one person that got a lot of credit today and got man the match was Patrick Oman. What's it been like for him to come into the squad? And he had an outstanding game today, didn't he? He made four or five great saves. Yeah, speaking to him because he he's actually lives not far from himself. So I've been taking him home and, and I know he's he's really keen to stay. Um, he's been enjoying his football here. He thinks, you know, credit to us, he, he thinks this is a, a club that could go places, that certainly has given him good exposure. He's still got ambition to do do well himself in the game. Yeah. So uh, he thinks this is a good platform for him to perform and he, uh, he loves the way we play. He, he, you know, we're a football inside. He, he enjoys that, he enjoys the training. He's got uh, respect for both Peter and myself. And yeah, I, you know, as I said, it, it, I don't know whether he's had a chance to speak to the chairman or not yet, but I know that he's really keen to stay. Um, but I've just said to Billy Bishop in there, you know, that I'm really proud of him. Uh, he's been a role model for us. He's taken, uh, he's back to fitness now. So, but now to have that competition for him, I think, uh, but the way he's dealing with that, I just said to him, I'm really proud of him. He's, he's, He's conducted himself magnificently and he's come on tonight because we had no one else. Uh, he's got amongst it on the corner. Uh, would have been great for him to score. Um, just give us a word on Patrick Oman though. He had a great game today, didn't he? Must have been half a dozen good saves. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. I mean, you know, I'm oppressed by us at every level. We have got six players out, six players with injuries or illness at the moment. And, um, you know, we can match top, top, the top. We can match the top yeah. uh, at that level. So, you know, Robin, Super Robins really um, can take on all comers and just look out in the cup, Dawkin. Well, I was going to mention that the cup draw today, it threw up exactly the same again as you were, Carl Shorten against Dawkin in the cup. Could you believe it when that came out of the hat? Oh, great. You know, you couldn't believe it. I think uh, a lot of the fans are all hoping for some sort of Super draw, like away to Tranmere or Torquay or someone like that. Personally, I hope for a tie that we could potentially win. And having the home advantage is even better in that respect. So, yeah, it will simmer nicely because I think the game was quite lively and a bit tempestuous at times. Yeah, yeah. So I think it sets it up nicely for the follow-up in a couple of weeks' time. Um, yeah, Dawkins came out with uh, an intention to be really uh, on it from the get-go. So <laughs> You've lost him, you've lost him. Dan, 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 we're here, we're here. We're here. I, know, I know he's boring, but just humour him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Most of this is going to get cut out anyway. It's not going to be in there. It's not fair because he's the editor. And then in the second half, we kind of took over the game and had more possession and created some more chances. So what was it like going into the last 10 minutes when you, you kind of might be a little bit cold and not had much to do for a while? How do you keep yourself sort of fresh for that? Because they had a couple of chances near the end. Yeah, I mean, always just trying to, to, to keep the head switched on, keep talking to the boys, being switched on, just communicating and sort of trying to stay in the game and whenever there's something to do you just need to be to be switched on. What, what, was, the, what was Peter's take on the game afterwards in the, in the dressing room? Did he have words of encouragement or did he feel like it was an opportunity missed to have, to have beat the league leaders? No, look, we, we should be very proud of the performance. I think this just shows that we, we can beat any, any team in the league. Uh, with a bit of a luck today, we, we, we should have had three points. I mean, um, but definitely a, a proud performance, something to be proud of. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a bit unlucky with not getting the, the three points, as I said. Well, yeah. And um, do, do you go, um, where else have you guys been this season so far? Has it been uh, sort of seventh tier football or have you been anywhere else? <laughs> oh, uh, I've been to uh, I, I've been, been to a lot of matches because I love English football and in October I was in uh, Newport and that was the last of the prem, the last of the the, the, the 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 grounds, the league grounds. So I've been to all 92 now. Oh, you've yeah. done all of them. Yeah, yeah. I got all of them. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, <laughs> no, I don't really consider. But I have to say, I love English football. I love the passion, 
and it's much more atmosphere at the lower divisions okay, yeah, than at yeah. uh, the Premiership. So we will really love to go to the matches at the, the lower level. And tomorrow we are going to Boreham Wood. Ah, OK, so you're going up to North London tomorrow. Um, but, you know, I mean, with players of that character, if we can keep everybody together. And the toughest thing is, is keeping everybody happy, obviously, for Pete. But this is a great group of players. And, you know, when you think they're going down, uh, downhill with, with problems, they kind of prove you wrong. Uh, Please for Michael Isaiah tonight at last as well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he came back in. I, I've had a little kind of, you know, private chat with him. And uh, for me, he answered those questions, and let's hope we can keep on doing that. Excellent. Well, just just one word on, on Billy, because he came on for the last five minutes as a striker. So, you know, if Big Pat wants to stay, Billy's got a, he's got a second job, hasn't he? Listen, I think, uh, you know, with my, my Erin Dawes being a, an, an international goalkeeper, as you know, they're all frustrated centre-forwards. <laughs> all goalkeepers are frustrated centre-forwards. Believe me, in training, if you give them the choice of playing in goal or playing up top, they'll play up top. So it didn't take too much persuading tonight to get the kit on and get out there, believe me. <laughs> and speaking of goalkeepers as well, Billy Bishop came on for the last five minutes and played up front. Um, Jordan Cheadle off camera just said that if he'd scored today, we'd have to retire the number six shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he played brilliantly when he came on, actually. We thought he was going to get injured straight away on the first opportunity he had when he went up with the keeper well, because he, he came off limping. He looked, he looked like he'd pulled something in his thigh at one point. And I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, brilliant. I mean, we put a goalkeeper's on again to the top of the league, you know. It's, it shows the level of confidence that we've got. But Billy is a, is a top man. He's a top top man a real true sportsman and uh, yeah hats off hats off to Billy Bishop wonderful well